When you see a fraction or hear a division problem, something like 51 divided by 5, which of course is the equivalent of 51 over 5, what do you first do? Do you think of long division and try to solve the precise value of this in that way? Or are you able to visualize what's happening and think about the intuitive process of dividing 51 by 5? Well, there's nothing wrong with long division, but I think it's important to also be able to, at least at the beginning, estimate what this is. For example, I know that 5 times 10 is 50. What does this mean? Well, this means that 51 divided by 5 is at least 10. So it's greater than 10, right? So it's greater than 10. Why? Because 51 is larger than 50. So you should know right from the start that 51 over 5, it, since it's greater than 50 over 5, you should know that 51 over 5, it's really close to it, is about 10. This intuitive process right here of thinking what is the fraction close to is an important first step and something that can't be overlooked. If we're talking about numbers in class or we're talking about it in a conversation, you should begin to immediately, immediately estimate through this process. Now, the precise answer is quite easy to find because 51 divided by 5 is equal to 10 with a remainder of 1. But what does that mean? Well, this, mean that, this means that 5 goes into 51 10 times and 1 out of 5, or 1 fifth of a time. And that's the answer. As a decimal, this is what? Well, it's 10 and the fractional part, 0.2. Now, the thing is that in order to be able to do this last process here, you should always be able to convert a fraction into a decimal, but some of those might require long division. However, there are certainly some fractions we, we should be able to retain. For example, let's start with a half. A half is a fifth, right? Because 1 divided by 2 is 0.5. And that's something we can build off of to understand 1 fourth. We could memorize that 1 fourth is 0.25, but how can we use 1 half to get 1 fourth? Well, if we cut a half in, four, in half, we get a fourth, right? If you have a hole and you cut it in half, and this is half right here, and you cut that half in half, Right? What do you have? What is this piece right here? Well, that's a fourth of the total. The half of a half is a fourth, and that's 0.25. Now, there are several ways to get there. You can think of 0.5 as 50 cents cut in half, or just as 50 cut in half and get 0.25. You can think of 5 cut in half to get 2.5. Right? Of course, just remember that 1 fourth is less than 1. And what about an eighth? Well, an eighth is just half of a fourth. And what's half of a fourth? Well, it's half of 25. It's 12.5. So it's 0.125. You can also think of 0.25 as 0.250 or 250. That cut in half is 0.125. What about 1 16th? Well, a 16th is a half of an eighth. An eighth, you can think of it as 12 and a half. 12 and a half cut in half, right, would be 6.25 or 0.0625. If you don't like that, you can think of 0.125 as 1250. 1250 cut in half is 625. Just remember this zero right here represents um, the tenths place, so we are losing that place. It's going to be smaller than 0.125, so it's going to be 0 0.0625. So one half to any power, a half or a fourth or an eighth or a sixteenth, right, or what would be next, well, a thirty-second, well, those are easy to find if you just know one half. So all you really have to know here is one half. Another real um, landmark fraction that I like to use is one third. Now a third, right? Well, that's not a good color to read. Fix that. One third is equal to point three, repeating, right? So what would two thirds be? Well, those are you would just double each of the threes here. Instead of getting point three repeating, you would get point six. Uh, the interesting thing, of course, extend this, and we get 3 thirds. Well, if we tripled 0.3 repeating, we would get 0.9 repeating. Of course, 3 over 3 is also 1, and we run into this interesting scenario, right, that 0.9 repeating is 1. Let's keep going. Another couple of landmark fractions. 
One fifth, of course, is very useful, and that's 20% or 0.2. So two fifths would be what? That would be 0.4. We double this. Three fifths, we could triple 0.2 to get 0.6. Four fifths is 0.8, and five fifths is one. I guess another uh, landmark, and perhaps the final one that I think I find myself using most frequently is ni our ninths. So one ninth, well, let's go up to three ninths. Three ninths is one third, or 0 0.3 repeating. So what was two ninths then? And what's one ninth? Well, it's hot down to one ninth. It would be a third of a third, so it should be 0 0.1 repeating. Then two ninths is double that. 0.2 repeating, you might see a pattern here, 4 and ninths, well 4 ninths is 0.4 repeating, 5 ninths is 0.5 repeating, 6 ninths is 2 thirds, that's 0.6 repeating, 7 ninths, right, is 0.7 repeating, 8 ninths, so look at the pattern here. It's easy enough to just realize that all you have to do is take your numerator, in this case 8, and make that the repeating decimal. So 9 ninths, the final one, is 0.9 repeating, or 1. And again, we run into this right here. So what kind of problems might you have to be able to handle with all these landmark fractions and this idea of remainders? Well, any improper fraction can quickly be evaluated as a decimal with this process. For example, let's say we had 33 right, over 16. Well, I know 16 goes into 33 twice. Right, 16 times 2 is 32, and it has a remainder of 1. Remainder of 1, and that means it's 16 goes into 33 twice and 1 16th. So here we'd use our landmark fraction. We have 2.0625. Right? So this process for all of these landmark fractions, I think, is going to be key as you talk about numbers and fractions in class. Thanks.